Hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Today is Wednesday, June 6, 2018. I uh, just wanted to give you a snapshot, a, a uh, ranking system that I've developed over the last week or so. So here on CoinMarketCap with the latest 24-hour change of uh, cryptocurrencies. You can see there's a lot of red in there. It's a bit improved from last week. But still, nonetheless, it's still a very high percentage of red, meaning losing money. Okay, so as I said, I've created this new script here called Big Analyze Crypto Rank. Compiles all the charts, all the logic that I've used to up to this point. So now we're going to try to rank cryptocurrency opportunities, and I can do. I've combined them all into um, hourly and weekly I've dropped not even including the monthly I just don't find them very useful so I've got this uh, spreadsheet here called crypto rank so I'm going to open it up in Libre office I don't use Excel but it's still an Excel spreadsheet and a couple things I want to go over before I show you um, the details the gory details as they like to say all right so Let's just uh, talk a few things. So in here, as I said, we've got hourly and daily time frames only. We have here simple one or zero on FIB value, but the one that really is now driving the potential of taking on trades is this volume. So what I've done, depending upon the time frame I'm capturing, this volume is the latest volume available to for that time period of when it was downloaded so hourly that's the latest volume on an hourly basis or daily on a latest on for the daily so as you can see it ranges from this to this and it, and it really has a huge impact on what pairs you take on so i'm not going to talk about that um I'm going to emphasize it's very, very, very important. And what it means is if your volume is very low, like here at 4.31 over an hour, uh, your slippage on the exchange is going to be very great because no one's buying or selling this. So there's no point in taking on this, this uh, pair because if you can't sell or buy, that means you'll be stuck with a trade if you buy it and you won't be able to fill it for, uh, fast. And the other thing I kind of notice is a lot of these lower volume cryptocurrency pairs I'm not saying they are but there's a much higher likelihood versus something like this to move that price or to that volume it's it's very a very low probability of it being manipulated unless the exchange is doing something nefarious but uh, out of all the exchanges I've seen and talked about among other people Binance is still probably out of the cleanest of the dirty shirts or more I won't say most reliable, but out of all of them, the most reliable. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Um, the other thing is with the lower volume, uh, they can be probably manipulated by the founders uh, to pump the price. But I've watched a video from the founder or CEO of the Binance, and they, they obviously don't encourage it because it's going to lose trust on the entire exchange that no one would want to trade on. So, knowing that, um, that is a huge factor. The other thing is, I'm going to walk you through the columns here. So, we have the time frame again, hourly, daily. The FIB value is basically, if you've looked at the charts, and I'll show you the charts in detail as we get into it, the, um, the pair has to be either under the gold uh, zone or within the gold zone. We don't want to trade when it's above the gold zone because it means it's overvalued the signal is an interesting one i'm going to break this out later on but right now we're going to assume a long only strategy but because the markets are so bad and it's so bearish in the cryptocurrency world there are probably uh, a lot a lot of shorting opportunities for me on um, my experience i find shorting can be a tough game but if this strategy or if this entire call it system works I see no reason to short uh, as I uh, test this in the initial phase. So 
This really is just a signal for longs. But as I said, I'm going to have a buy and a sell signal. And that's again generated, if you have seen my charts, the moving averages uh, crosses. In here throughout, you'll, you will notice that I don't have any moving averages. That's because they're all part of this signal. And it's just a simple up arrow or green arrow. And from what I've seen, it's very, very reliable. Here we have the uh, head and shoulder difference. Um, if there's a head and shoulders above, if you've been watching my head and shoulder videos on the automated one, this is where you get the little dot. Um, I have a, a bit ability when I generate a head and shoulder, there's the neckline. So sometimes there will be uh, that price, the latest price will break through that neckline if I am going to long and the price eventually does break or even touch the <coughs> neckline. And then there's an associated dot, be it green or blue. Um, and that means the expected move will be the distance between the neckline and the green line. Again, I can show you that in uh, more detail. So this right here is the difference in that price between the neck and the green, the expected move. Here is the trend difference. When the trend is broken, um, we also track the difference there between the price and the trend line. So the higher the trend, but again, the question is, do I normalize all the data to show the re relation and show how it's all relative? Because this is just raw data. So if the price is, is minute, um, we need to normalize the data, I think. We talked about the volume, um, the momentum, these two are from my statistical analysis. If you've seen my statistics, I have the ability to do kurtosis, mean, all that other fancy stuff. But right now I'm keeping it, trying to keep it simple on uh, momentum. So these are the amount of, out of a thousand. So my look back on all those data is a thousand hours or a thousand days. Now it ranges, the range of, of that can be different depending upon uh, when the cryptocurrency was uh, initialized on the uh, the exchange. So you may have a cryptocurrency may have been on this exchange for six months, whereas crypto, uh, something like Bitcoin may have been on the exchange for two years, let's say. So that's the difference. So when you see these differences, like this daily here on this pair of 151 up versus, actually it's a bad, it's Bitcoin. <laughs> um, but th there will be some differences here on this wave BNB pair um, where that may only have 80 moves and that's daily. So I do have the ability to track the number of daily moves. Uh, well, if it's daily or hourly moves or hourly returns out of the entire thousand. Um, also, We've talked about standard deviation. This is important uh, if you believe in volatility of the crypto pair. So as a result, most people that are conservative would probably want to go with a lesser volatile or yeah, lesser volatile uh, currency pair. So let me load up my, my um, channel here. So I'm going to show you some of the videos that may Hi be helpful. Here. If you come under, uh, actually come under my playlist, I have the um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Um, these two um, playlists, and um, they'll show you all the different hey everybody, all the different videos and research I put into these things, but. Um, there, there are is let me let me just go back uh, a better way to search for anything that you're interested in. So my case, standard deviation. Um, let me just show you some of the videos here. Um, okay, just as an example, I did. Hey everybody, I, uh, Brian here. Shut up. Um, in here, I've done a uh, a video on the assessing different pairs. And uh, if you want to know about the stats, just
just go back to the main part of the channel and uh, just go under stats in there you'll find out how I break out all this different stats this one is what I'm just about to tell you about the volatile most volatile and highest momentum so these are two stats that I really pay attention to when it comes to stats so here um, is another one I've just added the harmonic pattern now initially when I started my um, we call it research or whatever um, what I did was I was looking for and I'll just do a sort on this now again I can do all of this automated through these are all data frames in Python or pandas or numpy I don't know <laughs> anyway so what we've done is we've sorted by volume so you can see here who's got the higher volume um, so that's important so if I did a another sort here on K which is the harmonic pattern descending okay so what you'll find here is I have a, I have a harmonic pattern again this is only for long so we know we can have a potential buying opportunity when we combine if there is a harmonic pattern on top of a signal once we have those two from what i've seen high probability it is a, a valid entry okay but um I, ha I have to make this column a lot more intelligent because if i include the shorting capability i want to know what kind of pattern harmonic pattern it is it's a Gartley ABC bad butterfly and um, also what I want to know if it's bullish or bearish now here in the signal what I also want to break out is a buy or a sell signal so between these two signal and harmonic pattern I will be able to get some pretty good uh, entry signals with between the two so essentially what I've done currently is I've got or I've developed in a way where is there a harmonic pattern? The one represents yes, but we don't know what kind of harmonic pattern. And then combine that with the signal, we can then say, which is usually a signal either in the last hour or the last 24 hours or in the last day, if it's daily, on, on the daily time frame. So if we know that, we have, a, again, a completed harmonic pattern and a buy, in, in our case, because it's long only, a buy signal, then chances are we've got a pretty strong likelihood that we have a decent um, opportunity to, to enter in the markets. But you also got to factor in all these other factors of, of these other indicators to make sure that it's something you want to take on in terms of risk, volume, um, volatility of, of the currency pair. But we have all that data now in this one snapshot for that currency pair. So between all that, I'm now going to sort by signal, which is column E. And I'm going to show you some charts. So this is probably right now, uh, currently the way the data is developed, or this is developed, that we have here some opportunities here. Ignore, I'm going to ignore this one because I don't know if you've seen the videos on, on how I feel about hourly hourly data. And this is an hourly time frame. But, but I do like my, um, I do like my uh, daily charts. Okay, so we have our daily charts with a positive signal. The other thing we want to look for in this snapshot is to make sure that they are undervalued, that they're not overpriced, okay? So we have to have a buy signal in the last day. We also have to have, make sure we have a FIB value, which is basically, it is really a buying opportunity. Do we have trend? Usually these are the, the um, numbers that we can rely on, on top of the volume. So again, if I wanted to, just, just by looking at this, and again, I can automate um, these are hourly. So this one right here is the Cha Chat Ethereum. Is that a one to take on that I will will, will risk because of the low volume? Is this worth taking on this uh, BNT Ethereum? 
or this other one. So what I'm saying is this, this is a definite, a definitely good uh, opportunity because of the volume here, but comparatively to all these other ones, I can then uh, allocate percent wise based upon the volume, what risk I'm willing to take on just alone uh, from a portfolio perspective, how much I should allocate. Let's say if I want to allocate a hundred or a thousand dollars a day in trading, obviously I want to allocate more, more, more dollars, more capital to this one. If the, um, just based on the volume alone. So, and then you, you can determine your allocation of dollars that you want to allocate for the day for these. If I was to just purely just on this information alone, allocate how much and allocate how much of capital I want to deploy each day based just on the volume alone. But then I also have, what about trend? What about um, which has a stronger trend uh, over the last year or so? We can also see momentum is another good one. So you can see here, we've got a much better momentum here, right here, because the momentum is much higher than the other ones. So we can see, um, but again, we have to see overall, that's over the last, uh, I can't remember the time period. Like it just depends upon, but I, I can verify that through this, the, the charts, which we'll do in a minute. But we have the momentum to, to measure on. And now we also have the volatility to measure. So we can see here, this one is much, is less volatile than some of these other ones. So this, this one probably obviously be a much more volatile, this one, this GC, GSX Ethereum is a more volatile. And of course, um, I'm going to make this a little more intelligent saying, is there any harmonic patterns to overlay our decision on the entry? Okay, so these are pretty good. So let's check out the charts. And again, I just want to remind you that this data is over a week old. So don't take this literally, uh, but I just want to show you the mechanics of it and the power of it. Okay, so let's go over to our charts right here. Okay, so I guess our best one, this is a fairly volatile pair, this NAV BTC. So let me just check that one out. Nav BTC, so we only want the daily because that's all we're focusing on. So if I look at the trend, but you see it's, it's been above trend, even though the trend overall is long term down, it is above trend. So I don't think you'll make a ton of money at it, but in a bear market, that's not a bad thing. And again, as I said, this overall price right here, is lower than the 0.382 or is lower than the this is our goal zone right here these two the pink and the gray let me just maximize this so you can see here the 0 0.382 0 0.618 is our gold zone uh, according to how I did it could be wrong based upon other uh, Fibonacci experts out there um, so actually did I get the wrong so we want nav BTC. Let me just make sure I got. So you've seen that. So this is the one I want to show. So yeah, it's well, like this is the daily one day. It's definitely below that gold zone. Here the 0 0.382 and the 618 for Fibonacci levels. Um, so again, if you look at the signals, this is what we're looking for right here, right there. If you look at that buy, that's our buy signal that generates this guy. So generally, that's a confirmed moving average cross. Woo, woo, that's a lot of people use that. Um, if you look at historically, you're not going to be making oodles of money on the price. Here we had a buy sale and it came down. And th these cro this cross looks pretty good. So it made a little bit of money. If, if you applied the ATR, you could have probably dumped here gotten a little bit even though these are small moves you got to understand this is a little buy signal and this went up to from point zero 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 one ten to point zero 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 one five that's that's a, almost a, a a little a tiny move 
But if you put the right allocation, that's a nice return. And um, we, we got to uh, concern that. But as I said earlier, we don't want to deal with the hourly because of... Nav, where's our hourly? Right here, nav BTC. You'll see how noisy it is. Like if you go buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, it defeats the purpose of these buy, sell signals, and it gets very, very noisy. Um, that's why I just would rather pay close attention to the daily and only the daily, and only pay attention to the hourly, um, because... Uh, you won't you won't do all that well on the hourly. I find it just smooths out a lot of that extra volatility. So there is no real. If I took a look at the head and shoulder of this thing, uh, it probably doesn't even generate one. Yeah, see, there's no head and shoulder generated on the daily. So that's why it's zero. The trend we talked about. And he's shown you the volume is very high, which is good. Um, momentum, statistically, I could probably pull up the chart for that. Same with the standard deviation and the pattern. There is no harmonic pattern for this. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. But, again, let, let, me, let, me, let me just open up another directory here um, and load up that, uh, load up the harmonic charts uh, where are you harmonics there we go so if I look at the charts for that let's see if there is any uh, so here as I said in the harmonic patterns we get bearish and that could be a bat or a butterfly or a Gartley and it's all not only um, bearish and bullish so that's the cool thing about this. So here's the NAV BTC has been generated. Is that what we want? NAV BTC. So a bearish, a bearish signal that has been signaled for the hourly. But what about any on the daily? Um, there's a better way to do this. Let me just show you the amount of charts that get generated first as a side. A lot of people want to know about that. So analyze, chart, Binance. So here's all the charts that I just showed you earlier from the anal analyze. Uh, so we want the PNG, um, WC, word count. So we just, I'm just under 3,000. A lot of these are useless, but the ones that we're ranking here can be useful. But uh, they're generated automatically through the scripts that I've written. So again, um, going back to our terminal. So we are wanting to go into the harmonics, chart, Binance. Is that the right one we want? Yep. Okay. So what I can do is I can go, so NV, NAV, BTC, BTC, PNG. So what we have is just bearish. So we only have bearish signals on the um, harmonic patterns generated on the hourly basis. So again, that just adds the risk of taking on the trade, but on the daily um, it looks good, but the hourly, I don't know. So if we look at this one, the chat Ethereum, the volume's low. I wouldn't even, ch I wouldn't even take that on because the momentum is much higher in the nav BDC versus this other one. But just for kicks, we're going to check out some of the charts. So that's chat. No, I want this one. So if I look at chat, 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 Ethereum. So we want the daily. 
So again, we, we, we initially what kicked this off is that signal that's verified. It is undervalued. What's the trend like? Down, but again, you see it's above that trend, not great, but you could probably see uh, make some money there. So the next question is, are there any harmonic patterns developed for this thing? So let, let's check out that. So what we want is chat Ethereum. So here we have bullish on the hourly. So very interesting, very, very interesting. So we have three harmonic patterns generated. So that might be worth trading. Even though the volume, the, the risk, real risk is against you because of the low vol, the volume, that not a lot of people are buying it. Uh, not a lot of momentum, but for now, that might be a pretty strong signal to get in. And that's hourly. So again, the reason why I create the hourly charts is if I decided to build automation and trade on an hourly basis, I can do that um, with just doing the same routine that I'm doing right now, but just do it and watch it on a hourly basis. So that looks pretty good. Same vol volatility as the other one. So who knows? That might be a good hourly intraday trading opportunity. So next one we're looking to look at is this GXS, GXF, GXF. Okay, let me let me just verify if this is in the top 100 um, currencies. So let me just see if we have it. See, it's not to be found, but let's see what we have here. If this thing works, GSX Ethereum. Well, somebody's got it. Let me just do uh, see if I can get a proper chart on this. Charts and quotes trading view. This will probably come up on crypto. Who's the provider? See, it's not. So go all the way up to point zero. Eight strong buy. There you go. Let me just check on the other ones. Now again, this is a week data old. Uh, let's check out this one while we're here, based upon what Trading View says. Chat coin Ethereum. So that's a sell. It, it was a weak data, but um, chat looks like a really nice entry. Hmm. Let's check out the other one. Now BTC. I'm going to do another another run of the latest data. So again, this is out of sync by a week. Sell. Nav idea, nav, nav short term retracement. Hmm. Okay, but we'll get more detail out of that. So this one looks good, even according to um, Trading View. Vo a little more volatile. The trend is, well, let's check it out. That was GS, so we are doing this one, GSX. GSX GX 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 F S Ethereum trend hourly daily So again it's this guy right here but the moves are kind of unpredictable some of them 0 0.04 to roughly depends even a wick is going breaking through that point zero zero six so when you factor that in that could be uh, another i'd say four fifty percent move who knows but this this one's a nice one back in march point zero 
for all the way up to 0 0.07. That's a nice move. Okay, so we've got the, let's see our trend. Uh, see, it just spikes up. Signal. Oh, uh, Fibonacci. Just, just entering in our break. So that, that, who knows where that's at now. Um, but that, that, that looks pretty good, even though it's a low. The, actually, the volume's not too bad. So let's look at this last one here. Momentum looks pretty good here on the BNT Ethereum. Let's check that out. Like I said, I'll eventually get to know these cryptos as I work with them. It's only two weeks now, so please forgive me. BNT Ethereum. So we want the daily. Let's check out the signal here. See here, buy, sell. Here's a nice move. But we've got a buy right here. And what's our trend looking like? Down, but it it's it's above trend, which is good. And again, it's in our it's in our uh, gold zone. And um, yeah. So if I look at the last two, see if I can do, if there's any uh, harmonic patterns generated, BNT, BNT, Ethereum. So we do have, it's a bullish hourly on that, on that one. So that's good. GSX, Ethereum. You see, there's no, um, and, oh, and shoulder let's just check out this last one here for the harmonic pattern so g s g xs ethereum png yeah again we've got bearish this is kind of confusing it's hourly hour and they're all out early so we have two bearish and one bullish um i probably would be very cautious on that one otherwise but some of these are not too bad they look good um, but I just want to show you this uh, ranking spreadsheet because it's very helpful now to be able to see things um, in a snapshot at that one point and uh, it's really the, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to make this a lot more intelligent and also include the shorting which I'm sure there's going to be much more opportunity there. So I just wanted to put that out there for y'all. Let me know what you think, and we shall talk to you later.